All, all right, here we go. So, new topic. All right, we're uh, <clears throat> looking at relative motion on a rigid body. We've done relative motion of particles. <clears throat> um, now we're going to do relative motion on a rigid body. Remember our relative motion uh, equation, VA equals to VB plus VA slash B. Um, this equation still holds true. <clears throat> and so what about the special case of if point A and point B are on the same rigid body, right? <clears throat> if point A and point B are on the same rigid body, sometimes maybe, maybe we know the velocity of B, and we want to kind of, you know, figure out or kind of jump to the velocity of A on that same rigid body. <clears throat> uh, we could use this method to, to kind of, you know, jump from one point to another. So, we've got VA equals VB plus VA slash B. <clears throat> so, what is that VA slash B term? Let's think about VA slash B. What is the, what could the velocity of A be doing with respect to B? So, <clears throat> A and B are on the same rigid body. You know, pretend like you've got a block or a piece of paper, some solid object. You've got point A drawn on it. You've got point B drawn on it. <clears throat> and this solid object could, could be doing lots of things. It could be rotating, translating, moving up, down, left, right. What's the only thing that A can do <clears throat> with respect to B? You know, if, if you were kind of, if you are B, right, or maybe you are Focus on B. So sometimes when I do this, I take a sheet of paper, draw a point A, point B on it, and focus on B. You know, just stare at B. <clears throat> move, move your paper, but keep on staring at B. What is A doing with respect to B? Well, you know, let's say, <clears throat> let's say these are five inches apart. This is a rigid body, right? The distance between A and B is not changing, correct? You know, that's that's kind of the definition for a rigid body. <clears throat> the distance between A and B are not changing. So what's the only thing that A can do? A can't get closer to B, right? No. A can't get further away from B. <clears throat> but what could A do with respect to B? It, it has to stay at this five inches away. But it could it could kind of <coughs> go you know a, a around B if B was your reference point if B was your reference frame. So let's say <coughs> a few things about that. The distance between A and B is constant. If this was just in translation, A <coughs> would be staying right there, right where it is. You know, if this was just in translation, the velocity of A, let's think about this, if only translation, <coughs> uh, the velocity of A would be equal to the velocity of B. Correct. If we're only in translation, then that A is staying right there, five inches, and at the same spot, same orientation <clears throat> as it is originally from B. Um, so knowing that the distance between them is constant, um, and that you know if if there's only translation, then whatever the velocity of A is, the velocity of B is <clears throat> as well. Uh, so let me, I just wanted to, to kind of point out <coughs> that this relative term depends on rotation. This relative term depends on rotation. <coughs> All right, so what is that term? All right, I know it depends on rotation. It depends, it depends on this omega. And it looks like this is almost just rotating around 
<coughs> B. If B was your reference point, then yeah, it, it would just kind of, the only thing that A could do can't go any further away from five inches, you know, away from B. <coughs> it could just kind of go around B. All right, so <coughs> the magnitude of this relative velocity term is R times omega of the rigid body. And what is R? R is not the radius, necessarily. <coughs> R now is the distance between A and B. Distance between A and B. So that's the magnitude. <coughs> the direction is extremely hard to visualize. It's hard to understand. I, I don't even understand it, honestly. So, but hey, what can we do if we if we don't want to visualize the direction ourselves and we want the math <coughs> to do the direction for us? All right, I was going all the way around the bush to get to this equation that <coughs> the relative velocity of A with respect to B is omega cross R. Doesn't that look familiar? <coughs> yeah, yeah, it looks familiar <coughs> about finding the velocity of, of something that is in rotation. But this is omega cross R, not R cross omega. It's omega cross R. And so this would be the omega of the rigid body. You could say omega AB, omega BA. It's just the omega of the rigid body. It only has one omega. So it doesn't matter if you're looking at point A or point B. <coughs> the rigid body that both A and B are on, is, what, is the, what is the angular velocity of that rigid body? So this is the angular velocity... of the rigid body A and B are on and this R this R we need to be real careful about this if we're doing the velocity of A with respect to B <coughs> this is going to be R of A with respect to B so this is the position vector of A <coughs> with respect to B. So, so do you see that that is a vector from B to A. A vector, look, look at this, from B to A. So this would be the position from B, whoops, from B to A. From B to A. <coughs> so maybe it's, you know, Negative 3 in the I plus 4 in the J. Whatever its, it's vector is. Alright, so let's put that in, <coughs> into our relative velocity equation. Now we know this term is omega cross R. Omega cross R. So, here's our equation. <coughs> VA equals VB plus VA slash B. And then I'm going to immediately rewrite this. I know that that term is <coughs> omega cross R, A slash B. This is omega of AB. There we go. <coughs> so, for two points on the same rigid body, right? For two points on the same rigid body, you can take the velocity of one point plus the omega cross r to find the velocity of the other point. All right. <clears throat> so that might be helpful for rigid bodies that aren't just in pure rotation. You know, if it's in pure rotation, you, you define everything from the center. But if a rigid body is not in pure rotation, <clears throat> maybe you know the velocity of one point on it, <clears throat> and you want to know the velocity of another, a different point on it, you can use this relative velocity equation to kind of jump from one point to the next point. This is a vector equation. This is a vector equation, so, so it's kind of two equations. Right? I equation 
and my J equation. Sometimes I like to separate that sometimes. All right. And just be able to do this cross product. Be able to do, <coughs> this is in the K, maybe positive K or negative K, positive K if it's counterclockwise, negative K if it's clockwise. Be able to cross that with an I, cross that with a J <coughs> to get your velocity. So now, uh, a lot of times you, you don't, a lot of times this is one unknown. A lot of times that is one unknown. So over here on the left-hand side of the equation, you, you, you probably don't want to have both of those as unknowns. You know, if you don't know anything about point A, <coughs> then you've got two unknowns over there, right? If you don't know anything about point A, you've got two unknowns over there, okay? But a lot of times, hey, maybe point A, maybe you actually do know the direction of that velocity of point A, <clears throat> so if you do know the direction of that velocity, go ahead and plug it in. Go ahead if it's all if you if you can tell it's all in the i direction, go ahead and say okay. Well, I don't know the magnitude, but I know it's in the i direction. Or if you know, hey, it's at a thirty degree angle. Go ahead and plug cosine thirty i sine thirty j in there, <clears throat> so that you don't have two unknowns on on that equation. But anyway, so we can use this problem for two points on the same rigid body. All right, use this problem for two points on the same rigid body.